my fault. Hello? Uh, do you think this is what they mean by being in the mainstream of American life? I hope not. I don't think I could stand the bruises. Leave any for the rest of us? Uh, these are books on deafness. I was babysitting for Kim Schuster the other night. Oh, really? How are your shins? My shins? Oh, she's much more subtle now. Which way are you heading, up or downstream? Up. Uh, where are you going? Chemistry. Oh. How is chemistry? In a word, tough. Hmm. I've been meaning to call you. Why haven't you? No good reason. Then call, for heaven's sake. Okay, I will. Okay. Uh, we're dancing pretty close to the edges. Why don't we move into the middle of the floor? Well, what, did, what did you mean? Well, the other night when I took you home, I wanted to stay. After I kissed you, I, I felt... right out of the wall. That day I will help you, but not today. Ralph Waldo Emerson is waiting for me. Bye. Oh. Thank you. Mr. Chote, is there anyone with my father? No, Dr. Clare. He's working on a report. Oh. I'm sure he wouldn't mind being interrupted. Not by you. Sit down. Oh, I forgot to tell Michael Rossi about dinner tomorrow night. Could that wait, too? Of course. Well, what is it, Claire? You don't know how many times I've rehearsed how to tell you this. How to break it to you gently. I'm your father, Claire. You don't have to break things to me gently. Maybe that's what makes it so difficult, because I love you. What is it, Claire? I'm married. To Vincent Markham. Well, that's... Why didn't you tell me? I knew something was wrong. The day you came back from Peru, I felt somehow that you, you needed me. I, I wanted to reach out to you, but somehow I couldn't. Civilized Mortons. We've always respected each other's privacy. Have you told your mother? Yes. When? Quite a while ago. Claire, will you tell me something? Why was it so hard to tell me? Don't you understand? I failed as a wife. And it was easier to tell another woman. No. That's too simple an answer. This is no time to respect your privacy, Claire. Or mine. Were you afraid of me? I don't know. Maybe. Why? I knew you wouldn't approve, and I've always looked up to you. Oh, what's there to look up to in a father you can't confide in? Dad. All the years, Claire, we talked. 
When you were a child and came here on Saturdays, we'd talk. And when you went away to medical school, you'd write to me. Then when you came back on vacation, we'd talk. When you were an intern here, we'd finish work. We'd talk. What was it, Claire? A lot of meaningless words? A father and a daughter. Or just two strangers. You and I had better get to know each other, Claire. If it's not too late. Wanted to see me? Dr. Rossi would like to speak with you in his office. You reported me. For insubordination. Miss Anderson? Anywhere near quitting time? Not just yet. I thought you might have worked the early shift. I did. Well, I have one or two more patients to visit, then I'll be leaving myself. I thought that if you should be finishing about the same time, I might drive you home. Well, I have to see Dr. Rossi, so I really don't know. Thank you. I understand you had a run-in with Miss Choate. Did she just get around to telling you? Well, she was allowing you time to apologize on your own. I think she has a right to expect that. She's the head nurse here. She has a certain right to respect. Well, come on now. I mean, give in, huh? Is that all, Dr. Rossi? Now, wait a minute. None of us can permit a lack of discipline at the hospital. That includes me, no matter what my personal feelings might be. And what are your personal feelings, Doctor? Well, up to this point, I think you've been a very competent nurse's aide. Is that all? Aside from the friction with Miss Choate, I can find no fault in your behavior at the hospital. But aside from that, I don't exist. I don't follow you. No, I don't suppose you do, Doctor. Betty. What is it? I'm starting to get a picture of myself, and I don't like that picture. Little girl with a lot of problems. Little girl mincing around in her candy stripes, atoning for the past. Trying to buy her way back into the good graces of this town. Well, I'm sick of it, Doctor. I am good and sick of it. Because no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, they still remember. Betty, wait. I'm tired of being what I'm not, and one of the things I am not is a little girl. I am a woman. I am through trying to live down my reputation. I'm... Am I to understand you want to quit your job? Then I can assume you will apologize to Miss Choate. Certainly, Doctor. I'll find her immediately and tell her I'm sorry. She's a vicious, nagging old witch. How much did you hear? Enough to wish you'd open the door sooner. Naturally, I didn't intend to eavesdrop. I have an appointment with Dr. Rossi. I need his signature on some papers. You know, I wish I needed your signature. I'm not a doctor, excuse me. Oh, I know a great deal about what you're not. I'll only be in there a minute. Reverend Bedford. I'm ready if you want to take me home. Oh, wonderful. I have to get my coat.
preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Mrs. Schuster, please. I told him to do something, and she refused. If, if you let her get away with this, she'll never respect me again. Is that why you asked me out? Are you serious? To bring me back to the fold. Do you think they give me an expense account to wine and dine prospects? You think you have everybody classified in a nice, neat little niche, don't you? Well, one day that girl's gonna leave you in the dust, and I hope you choke her.